Do you wish you could still triple jump in Vault Hunters? Well, I'm here to tell you that that is still possible. You can triple jump until your heart's content or until your trinket breaks. But we are going to explore the world of trinkets today and see all of the cool effects they give and whether they're actually worth using and making. So the item that you want to be looking out for is this beauty. This is a vault trinket and is currently unidentified. Now these can be found in completion crates, in treasure chests, and very rarely in gilded chests as well. And all you need to do is right click on one of them and it will roll into one of the available trinkets. There are currently 17 trinkets in the game. Some of them are a lot more common, such as the night vision goggles, whereas some like the prismatic feather are very, very rare. As a general rule, you're always gonna be wanting to use a trinket if you have one, because there's no downside to using a trinket, it just gives you an extra effect. Now, once you find a trinket in the vault, you can go over to a vault forge and you will see that the recipe for that trinket has been unlocked. And this means that you can make multiple trinkets that you can then trade away, or you can just keep them as backups for yourself. And the reason that you need to make additional trinkets is because your trinkets can break. When you roll a trinket, you'll see that it randomly selects a number of uses for that specific trinket. And every time you enter a vault, one of those uses will be used up. Now, there is currently a bug where you can still use your trinket at zero uses and it won't break, but that is expected to be patched out very, very soon. So let's take these one at a time and have a look what effect it has and whether it is worth using, starting with the portable cat. A lot of you will remember the benevolent goddess charm from Britannia and the portable cat basically does the same thing. What it does is if you put some TNT on the floor or if this was a creeper and you stand reasonably close to it, it stops any block damage, which is incredibly useful while you are building in the overworld and also fairly useful in the vault so that your inventory doesn't get cluttered up when creepers explode on you. In the vault though, it doesn't seem like creepers are that prevalent. Sure, they're there, but they're nowhere near as bad as they used to be in 1.16. So unless you've not got another charm, this is probably not a great one to be using in the vault, but it is definitely one I would recommend using in the overworld. Moving on to the chromatic powder. Now, chromatic powder is really interesting because it halves the amount of durability damage that your vault gear takes. And if you have a really cool set of vault gear, then that might be absolutely fantastic for for you. Again, this one is fairly straightforward. There's not much more to it. You just take less durability damage within the vault. Now let's dive in to that triple jump that we were speaking about earlier, because it is not quite the same. You get this prismatic feather and granted you do get triple jump, so you can jump three times. But a really important thing to remember is that the Globetrotter Sash from Batania is disabled in this version. So before you used to be able to jump super high like that, whereas now the maximum height for triple jump is that. So it is not nearly as good as it used to be. However, it does have one very, very good use. If you are running in a vault and you fall down a hole, you can just jump right at the end of it and it will completely negate all of your fall damage. So as long as you time it right, you won't need Stonefall, Ghost Walker, or any water buckets in order to survive those massive falls. You can just jump at the end of it, which makes this one an absolute beast in the vault. Not as good as it used to be, but still absolutely amazing. Now, before we go any further, there is a really important distinction that you need to know about, and that is the difference between a trinket and a charm. When you get these in your inventory, you'll see that some of them are red and go in the trinket slot, and some of them are blue and go in the charm slot. You have two slots on your character that you access by pressing this button, and that means that you can have triple jump and half the durability at the same time. However, you wouldn't be able to have a portable cat and a prismatic feather at the same time, so you can only have one or the other. The trinkets tend to be a little bit less powerful, but you can use them alongside the charms, but make sure that you are checking them so you can see whether you can equip multiple ones at the same time. Now, it wouldn't be Vault Hunters if you didn't have one of these trinkets for each of the Vault Gods. So, you've got Valera's Petal, you've got Idona's Dagger, you have Wendar's Hourglass, and you have Tenos's Pouch. Each of these does something 
pretty much related to those gods. First up, Valerus Petal. That gives you plus one regeneration while you are in the vaults. Now this honestly is a little bit overpowered because you can just dash around. Oh no, I've taken some fall damage, but I will just keep regenerating that health over time. Now it's not going to save your life if you're being absolutely swarmed by mobs, but it is going to give you a little chance to back away and then just regenerate some health while mobs are trying to kill you. This one is probably one of the best trinkets that you can use inside a vault. It is absolutely fantastic. It also works outside the vault, so if you're just wanting to heal up a little bit and you don't have any food, then you are good to go outside the vault as well. I would probably keep this on at all times if you can. Now with the latest update, you no longer need a shard pouch to be able to get soul shards, so that makes Idona's dagger even better. Because what this does is it gives you plus 100% soul shard drops. So if we go around and start attacking all of these mobs, we should get some soul shards here. Now soul shards are still reasonably rare, but this is gonna double the amount that you get, so it is very, very useful. And especially with the new black market update, these are going to be a huge way of getting progress. Just in this one, if we somehow manage to get nearly 2000 of these shards, we could get a knowledge star for free, which would be absolutely huge. So definitely worth doing, and now you don't need the shard pouch, so it makes it even more accessible. Now, there's not a huge amount to say about Wendar's Hourglass. All it does is it adds two and a half minutes onto your vault timer. Normally, when we go into a vault, we have 25 minutes on the timer. But if you come in with a Wendar's Hourglass, you'll see we now have 27 and a half minutes, and more time is always better. And the final one is Tenos's Pouch. Now, this one is a lot harder to show off because it's more of a long-term benefit. What it does is it adds 25% item quantity to every single chest that you loot, which which means that you'll get more loot overall, but it's not a dramatic change, so not something we can really showcase here very well. Over time though, this will be massive. Every time you would unlock four knowledge stars, you will instead unlock five. So that is pretty fantastic. Now those god trinkets are really going to help you out with the vaults, and if you want to really help out with the channel, consider joining our channel memberships program. Either click the link in the description or there is a join button below the video. It's got a bunch of benefits and it will really help me out in continuing to make these videos for you. Now with mana being such a huge part of Vault Hunters, you now have the phylactery and the crystal orb which affect your mana. Now the phylactery is pretty simple. If we drain a little bit of mana out here, you'll see that it's slowly starting to go up, but if we use the phylactery, that speed doubles. That is going to give you a lot more flexibility in the vault to use all of your abilities. Now, if you want something a little bit more tanky, maybe you are using Mana Shield or something like that, then the Crystal Ball gives you a different benefit. What the Crystal Ball does is it gives you 50% more mana. So that means that instead of the 100 we had before, we now have 150, meaning Mana Shield could be up for a lot longer. These are both absolutely fantastic trinkets to have, and they just give you more flexibility, and there is zero downside to using these. I'm definitely going to be using at least the Crystal Orb, because I am going to run a Mana Shield build on my SMP world, so we are definitely going to be looking a little bit more into that, and if you do want to join us over there, make sure you check out the SMP videos on the channel. Now there's a couple of really cool mobility options. You have the frog and you also have glue. Now these ones are pretty awesome and I absolutely love these. The frog is basically the old step up ability. With this you can just walk straight up full blocks, no need to jump, you can just go up and down very, very easily. Now, frankly, this is not as good as when we had the talent and you could just go up and down, no problems, and you didn't have to use one of your trinket slots, but it is still nice that that option exists in the game. Glue, on the other hand, did not exist before. Glue is super cool because it allows you to climb vertically up walls. Now, be a little bit careful because... As you're coming down, you don't stick to it quite as well, so just make sure that you are prepared to take that full damage, 
but it can be very useful for having different mobility options. The one downside to this though is if you're used to running through the vault you can get stuck on walls very easily and it can be a little bit problematic. Sure you can use it to get up to the high levels but there's also different options that you've got such as dash and mega jump and all of that sort of stuff and I actually find it a little bit annoying to deal with rather than it actually being a benefit in the vaults. But that one is just my opinion. I'm sure some of you out there will make very, very good use of the glue. Now, because I'm at low health, this is actually a perfect opportunity to show off the gluttony pendant. Now, normally it takes a while to eat a carrot. However, if you equip the gluttony pendant, you can just one click and eat the carrot immediately. This comes in very useful for eating vault fruit later in the pack. And we basically relied on the gluttony charm almost constantly during the 1.16 era of Vault Hunters, especially when we were doing the endless vaults. Now, of course, remember you don't regenerate health from food while you're within the vault. So this has limited utility for health reasons, but it is very good for those vault fruit. Now, the only ones left are these four, and they are fairly self-explanatory. The night vision goggles simply give you night vision. This can be quite useful because the vaults are fairly dark, and if you don't know your way around, night vision can be incredibly helpful. And because this is a trinket slot rather than a charm slot, it's not going to massively detract from the other options. You then have giant's heart, which simply gives you 25% more hearts. A very good option if you do constantly die. The carapace one is pretty cool because if we stick some lava down here and then put the carapace one on, we are immune to lava. And naturally that extends to just general fire resistance as well. And I actually did lie to you, there's two more. There's the lucky goose, which gives you plus 50% item rarity. That's gonna mean that you're going to get those better items much more frequently and you also have the golden burger which gives you plus 50 percent experience in the vault be very careful using this burger because you can level up too quickly and you can out level your gear which can cause you a lot of problems later on if you end up in a death loop so just use that one a little bit carefully and only really use it for power leveling but that is basically charms and trinkets be aware that you cannot remove a trinket trinket or a charm once you are inside the vault so you need to be wearing it before you go into the vault so make sure that you pick them wisely if you did enjoy the video make sure you like it if you are new here subscribe to the channel i've been hellfire mage thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time